WCW Nitro was riding high and getting big ratings on TNT throughout 1997, so Sister Network TBS wanted to get in on some of that action. And the end result was the debut of Thunder on January 8, 1998. Not surprisingly, the addition of two extra hours of programming a week led to an overexposure of talent and a burnout of creative, and by the end Thunder was plagued by sparse crowds, dwindling ratings, and some of those mind-boggling segments committed to television. It's not one of the top reasons WCW died, but I think it makes the list. But for a while, Thunder was a hit, so why not name a video game after it? The result was WCW NWO Thunder, the sequel to Nitro, released for the PlayStation in January of 1999. But in reality, they should have just called it Nitro. Not even Nitro 2, it's basically the same game as its predecessor, with some disastrous programming decisions for good measure. Look at the character selection screen. Look familiar? It's just the Nitro selection screen with lightning bolts. It's the same deal as before. Click on a wrestler to hear a promo, where they either challenge you to a fight, or encourage you to pick them or in Kevin Nash's case, not to pick them. Hey, wait a second. I know what you're thinking. You want to be me like everybody else. Forget about it. You don't have the mental skills or the dexterity. Go on, go pick somebody else. Pick Hogan or some, don't pick me. Move, go, go. On the plus side, they doubled the number of wrestlers you start with, with 32 as opposed to 16 in Nitro. Weirdly, Ric Flair, Rey Mysterio, and Eddie Guerrero aren't included as one of the 32 starter wrestlers, but we do get grappling greats like Jim the Anvil Neidhart and the Disciple. There are another 32 wrestlers you can unlock by winning the WCW title with one of the original 32. For example, beat the game with Chris Jericho and unlocks the parka. Win with Hulk Hogan and unlocks Eddie Guerrero, cause why the hell not? So you can beat the game 32 times to unlock everyone, or you can just enter a cheat code, which, by the way, is the exact same code you use in Nitro to unlock everyone. Normally you can say with great confidence that Mike Enos is the most obscure character in your video game, but here that falls to Rick Fuller. Who's Rick Fuller, you ask? Well, he was a large Northeast indie guy who worked mainly as enhancement talent for WCW when the game came out. He had 20 matches in 1998 and went a robust 2-18, in including three losses to Goldberg, so I guess he was next. Fuller later did some quick work for the WWE in New Japan, but I'll always remember being the crap out of a guy at an indie show in front of 13 people in 2001 then getting a Polaroid with him afterwards, which sadly has been relegated to the dustbin of history. Entering that cheat code also unlocks a bunch of other characters, like the announcers, the Nitro Girls, and Ric Flair. Once again, the Inland staff decided to put themselves in the game as hidden characters, because that went over so well the first time. And again, there are a bunch of monsters and shit, like an ant named Adam, get it? There's also a pro wrestling gorilla here. Hmm, it's even spelled the same. I think a lawsuit may be in order. Overall, there's a whopping 128 playable characters even though you only care about maybe half of them. One new wrinkle is, when you select most of the WCW characters, you get a digitized clip of their entrance. I like how they use the goofiest entrance possible for Bret Hart. Anyway, this sounds good, right? Well, there are three problems. First, the clip only goes about five seconds, so it's over before you know it. Second, even if you select, say, the Starcade Arena to wrestle in, you'll always be shown coming out on the Thunder set, which is just goofy looking. Third, of the 32 entrances in the game, 13 of which are either the original NWO theme or the Wolfpack theme. So things get repetitive pretty quick. Hope you like hearing that the Wolfpack's back. They also use stock music for a bunch of entrances. That's fine for Jimmy Hart, but why Chris Jericho? I vividly remember his even flow knockoff theme. Clearly this was the driving reason behind him leaving the company. There's a new feature where you can edit what group a wrestler belongs to. Either NWO Hollywood or Wolfpack, the Flock, Four Horsemen, or the WCW Home Team. All it basically does is possibly change the color of your attire, and alters who might run in to help you. It's certainly no creator wrestler, or even a full wrestler edit, but it is something, and given how often WCW wrestlers jump from stable to stable, it was at least somewhat useful. If you thought there weren't enough people in the NWO, or it should have been the 40 horsemen, well, go to town. 
they did add a few new gameplay features. There's a cage match now, and it's fine. You throw a guy into the steel, or you can jump off and form aerial moves. They didn't screw it up, but it's not that interesting either. One weird thing is apparently the cage was too taxing graphically. It's you can't see the crowd or anything else, really. It's like every cage match is in an empty arena. They also added a battle royal mode, which is just a straight-up royal rumble. You start with four guys in the ring. When someone gets tossed, someone else comes down and takes their place. If you get tossed out, don't worry. You'll just take over for the next wrestler coming out. You may wonder how four wrestlers in the ring works when it's basically a 2D game, and the answer is poorly. It's extremely cumbersome trying to fight multiple foes. It's an endurance test to get to the end. Also, you can just leave the ring and hang out on the floor if you want. Yeah, it's technically legal since you're not going over the top rope, but it kind of goes against the spirit of battle royals. And then the new gameplay feature is the addition of weapons. You can alter how many weapons are outside the ring and how long you can hold on to them. One curious thing is that to pick up a weapon, you just walk over it. You don't have to hit a button or anything. It's nice in the sense that it's easy to get a weapon, assuming that's what you want to do. Then again, there are no DQs, so why not start throwing barrels like your Donkey Kong? The game looks basically the same. I will say they did a good job with a lot of WCW pay-per-view settings. Tony and Bobby are back for commentary. Kinda, and that they're quiet for long stretches of time, other than to let you know someone hit a suplex. Gameplay is largely the same, but changed in one way that essentially ruins the game further. It's still done as a 2D-3D hybrid, but they're mostly having the same moves outside of three specials. And you implement said moves by pushing a button sequence. By the way, the sequences are the same as Nitro, although you do have to grapple to do some moves now. But a power bomb is still square A, and the backbreaker is still down square triangle. But where the game really goes off the rails is a test of strength. Tap up and circle, and you'll lock up with your opponent in a standard test of strength. So what's the problem? Well, if you mash the circle button, you can drain a good chunk of your opponent's health. In fact, do it five times in a row, and you'll be in position to win in about a minute. Yes, the test of strength is the most devastating move in the game. Even better, for some reason, this move gives you health back. Why? How does being stronger than someone heal you physically? So there's literally no reason to do any other moves. I won a match as Goldberg with five tests of strength and then a kick, and the crowd threw garbage after the match. I know how they felt. I don't know what's more appalling. The wretched gameplay or how similar it is to Nitro. Look, THQ, I know Nitro sold a lot, so maybe you thought you were on the right track. But I chalk that up to WCW being hot and PlayStation fans being starved for a wrestling game. Besides, look at WCW vs. NWO World Tour. That game sold great and was critically acclaimed. And they still made a bunch of upgrades and gameplay tweaks for Revenge. They didn't put out the same game with a new name. Thunder amazingly lives down to its terrible reputation. It's a scary precursor for the hell on earth WCW would soon become. Blech. I feel we covered all there is to cover. Maybe it's time to close up the Funtime Arcade. I'm just kidding ya. There's a lot more stuff to cover, but we're going to go in a new direction. We've gone more or less chronologically the past 43 episodes, but we skipped a bunch of games along the way, as many of you constantly remind me. So we're going to go back and look at a bunch of older stuff. We're looking at some new stuff for Saturn, PlayStation 2, etc. So, got a request? Let us know. Maybe you'll see it on the YouTubes. In fact, we're going to get all 8-bit on you for the next episode. Till then, thanks for watching. Remember, the winner is you.